you. Thank you. Uh, so let me just take a moment to thank Ronald for, for bringing you and the Westland team. Uh, it's a big honor for us to have you here. Uh, Naomi Wilson, for you assist, there you go. Gospel singer, I'm gonna hear from her, she's amazing. Uh, brother Carlos, I don't know if he's here or not. Here he goes, Carlos is here, peace brother. Good to have you here. Uh, BL, here you go, how you doing? Wonderful, thank you for having us in. It's just a special shout out to a good friend of mine that we walked in. I was really moved, Brother Dario Benya. Wonderful to see you again, so thank you. Um, so let's, let me just take this opportunity again to welcome all of you to uh, the Exodus uh, first gospel concert along with uh, Westland and have fun. Allow the spirit to, to lead you. Um, just, just, just move with it. I think that's the most important thing. Real quickly about Exodus, I just want to tell you, we've been in existence for the last 23 years. Um, we have a mental health program. We have a wellness center. We have a great program live from Rikers. So we're actually going into Rikers Island right now. We've got about 50 staff members going into Rikers Island right now, and we're trying to make some changes in there. I'm not saying trying. We are making changes in there, right, Georgie? Um, so thank you to the, to the Rikers team for all that you're doing. Um, in this building, this is our, our newest building. This is called the Gray Center. Uh, here on the top floor, we have a full, all-out music studio along with podcasts. Brother Chris and, and, and Champ manage that. that. Let's give a shout-out to both of y'all for all that y'all doing. The third floor is the Rikers team. Second floor will be a gym. Um, and we're now at the, uh, the first floor, which is where we are now, the Gray Center. Downstairs is a barber shop and a hair salon, and we give out clothes as well. Um, so again, for Exodus, this is 23 years we've been doing this work. I think the biggest thing, if I could say any success about it, is there are 287 people on staff, and 90% of the staff are uh, impacted by the justice system. 90% of the staff have turned their lives around and are impacted by the justice system. We totally doing amazing work. Uh, we also manage six hotels uh, in New York City <clears throat> for people leaving Rikers Island and New York State prisons. So it's an honor to have all of you. We welcome you to our space. We are grateful. And let the show begin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. It's an honor for all of us from Wesleyan to be here um, in this beautiful space, uh, working with this wonderful organization, Exodus. Uh, so we thank you, and we thank uh, Rudy and uh, and Rain and Rock uh, and Sharika and Sharima all. Eric, all the great staff that has been helping us for the last few days put this together. You have a wonderful team here. We're happy to be collaborating with you, and we hope this is the beginning of more collaboration. So thank you to everybody from Exodus. Um, also, we want to thank our, our sponsors from Wesleyan who helped bring everything here from Wesleyan, the uh, Center for Pedagogical Innovation, the Creative Campus Initiative, the, uh, um, the service learning program and the All Britain Lecture Series. They all contributed to make this happen, so we appreciate that. And also, we want special thanks to our guest of honor, Carlos Roche, who's here. Uh, he, he, he is an extraordinary source of wisdom and living history as a survivor of the uh, 1971 Attica massacre. And later on, he's going to introduce the part of our program where we'll present some, uh, some material about that historic event. But before we do that, we're going to present for you the collaboration, uh, the results of the collaboration between my Wesleyan students behind me here and B.L. Shirell and Naomi Wilson. They, uh, they are two extraordinary women who, uh, between the two of them, have spent half a century in prison, but they came out strong 
and they came out determined to fight for the rights of the individuals they left behind. And they've been doing that in extraordinary ways. BL is the co-founder of the Die Jim Crow Records uh, company that uh, produces music by formerly and currently incarcerated individuals. So you can look for their music there. Naomi is one of the star recording artists of Die Jim Crow. So I urge you to look at their website, diejimcrow.com. And um, they also have been coming to meet with students and help them understand a lot about the injustices of the prison system uh, and to understand how it's possible to survive the trauma of incarceration, how they survived uh, by healing themselves and the women they met in prison through kindness, through generosity, and through music. Um, and, they, uh, and it's just been wonderful to collaborate with them. And they've also been reading together with the students Dante's Inferno, the story of climbing out of hell, climbing the mountain of purgatory, and getting to heaven. That's a, a story that Dante wrote in the 13th century, and we've been talking about how that might connect to the stories of men and women who have been in prison and are also working to climb out of their own personal hells of their past to reach and achieve a personal heaven in the future. Um, and it's easier to see that connection when you realize that when Dante wrote that back in the 1300s, he had been convicted of crimes himself and sentenced to death. So he wrote under the sentence of death knowing that if he ever went home, out of exile, he would be burned at the stake. So somehow there's a part of Dante's story that can really be only deeply understood by people who have lived through exile themselves and found a way to keep hope alive. That's what Dante did and that's what Naomi and BL have done in amazing ways and their spirit of keeping hope alive in spite of uh, obstacles comes through in the music and in the songs and the stories that they sing and tell. And those stories they've been sharing with the Wesleyan students, and the Wesleyan students in a few minutes are gonna do what Dante did. When Dante listened to the stories of the men he met in hell, purgatory, and heaven, he retold those stories, always beginning with the words, and he to me, or and she to me, uh, indicating that he was gonna give you the words directly verbatim of the men that he had been speaking to. So whenever you hear the Wesleyan students say, and she to me, that means that you're gonna hear the verbatim stories that BL and Naomi asked them to tell of, of Naomi and BL's experiences. And also when you see the students lift up their books, you'll know that they're quoting Dante directly from the medieval poem, and you'll be able to hear yourself some of the connections between that poem and the modern stories. Um, so uh, I think now we'll, we'll move right on to letting BL introduce the students and start the presentation. In the uh, second half, we'll, uh, I'll introduce Carlos, he'll talk to you. We'll do some pieces about Attica, and then we'll have time for discussion. So stay where you can talk to the performers, ask them questions, comment, let them know what you think. Uh, and uh, then we'll have special guests who have been working with the Exodus team, uh, some uh, local teenagers from the neighborhood, and uh, uh, some a very special guests performing after the discussion. So stick around for all of it, and we're really, really glad you're here. So now. I'll introduce B.L. Shirell, who is an amazing performer. You will hear her perform her rap, and listening to her reminds me of what Dante's grandfather said to him. He said to him, "Be put aside all falsehoods and make manifest your vision. In other words, cut through all the lies and tell the truth. And that's what B.L. does in every song she sings, every story she tells. So please welcome warmly B.L. Shirell. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, hello, thank you guys. Thank you very much to the Exodus Transitional Community uh, Center. Thank you, Professor, um, for sharing your venue and your artists with us today. And I wanna take this time to introduce my collaborators, um, the students here. Before I do that, I just wanna tell you guys 
Thank you very much, because as much as you think that I've taught you, likewise, you guys have taught me a lot, taught me so much, and I appreciate you guys. Um, this semester has been awesome. Um, so first I wanna introduce Professor Jenkins. I know he was just up here, but <laughs> um, Professor Jenkins was impressed by the talent and generosity of the freedom fighters he met while incarcerated in a South African prison during apartheid. Who knew that Professor Jenkins was formerly incarcerated? Um, <laughs> Professor Ron Jenkins began exploring the power of music and theater behind bars. Since then, he has facilitated theater workshops in prisons in Italy, Indonesia, and the US, often bringing his students from Wesleyan and Yale to collaborate with currently and formerly incarcerated individuals on performances inspired by Dante's Divine Comedy that raise awareness about the injustices of the US justice system. Then we have Lena Kruski, who's an exchange student from Germany. She will write her thesis on the profit-driven injustice of the American prison system. Serena Murdoch is a freshman studying American, African American studies and English. They are passionate about stories and listening. Serena aspires to be an author and journalist with a concentration in race and criminal justice reform. Gabriela Theodore Myers is a computer science student with a passion for human rights advocacy and a lot of personal connections with incarcerated family and friends. Cecilio Munoz is a first year film student with relatives impacted by both the US criminal justice system and immigration policy. Anissa Colon is an activist studying government, African American studies and human rights advocacy. She is passionate about international racial and ethnic justice and plans to get involved in alternative structures of government and law. And Tamaris Hollis came to Wesleyan to teach French and is currently doing a master's in English literature. Her interest in mass incarceration stems from having justice impacted family members. And not a student, but we also have Dario Pena. I don't wanna leave you out. <laughs> He's a phenomenal actor. Um, and I don't have your bio, but I love you. <laughs> And with that being said, these are the students of Wesleyan. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thank you very much. Right now, over 200,000 people are serving life sentences in American prison. Did you hear me? 200,000. That's enough people to fill Madison Square Garden 10 times. A third of them is older than 50 already. Until recently, Miss Naomi was part of the statistic. Imprisoned with other women facing death by incarceration for crimes they committed decades ago. Early in his journey, Dante encountered similar tragedies when he entered the first circle of hell, the limbo. There, he met virtuous souls, damned for eternity on account of the single sin that they didn't believe in God. <laughs> I apologize. Great sorrow. Thank you. Great sorrow seized my heart, Dante says, for I had seen some estimable men among the souls suspended in that limbo. And like Dante, Miss Naomi met beautiful people, kind and virtuous people in the hell we call prison. She shared with us the story of a dear friend, which I now pass on to you, as she asked me in her own words, and she to me. Phoebe is 87 years old, and she's waiting to come home right now. She'd been abused by her husband for years, and she didn't even have the courage you know, to kill him herself. But she had somebody else shoot him. She got a life sentence, but I love her. And once you get to know her, you can really see, you know, how she took that abuse because she's just so, so soft. We called each other Poo. And all those years I've known her, she's always been that same sweet person. She was always kind to me. She always remembered my birthday. <laughs> She knows I love sweets, so she would buy me candy from commissary and have it like wrapped up with a bow on it. Always a Christmas present. Just that kind of a thoughtful person. All the time. 
She's in a wheelchair now, living in the infirmary. She's been there, in there almost a year now, just waiting to come home. I don't even know why they're holding her up. But that's just how the system goes, you know? Playing mind games on you. This woman is 87 years old. She doesn't even know where she is half of the time, you know? What, what harm is she going to cause to anybody? Just let her come home and die with her family. Her granddaughter loves her dearly. She's genuine. She's real people, and she deserves to come home. Let her come home. was arrested and put in jail for a set-up shootout with undercover police. Across her music career, she shares her journey from struggle to triumph. This path has never been linear. As an adolescent, Biel was both praised by her teachers for her poetry and being surveyed and set up to go to prison. When she was released for the first time, she experienced the crooked system that was set for formerly incarcerated people. She asked me to share her story in her own words about the generational impact mass incarceration has had on her and her family. And she to me, my mother is formerly incarcerated, my father is formerly incarcerated, my son is justice impacted, this is something that has made its way through my whole family. I'm standing here with my child in front of the same judge I stood in front of before. Can you imagine a judge giving out their first life sentence? How I made them feel that day? And 40 and 50 years later, doing the same thing. By then, it don't even mean anything. That day with that judge, everything started playing back. I was arrested with my mom. Like, me and my mom were arrested on th three separate occasions on the same cases. When I got back home from prison, my mom wasn't even the same person. I had to get to know her all over again. It was a great experience. I'm watching my son go through Ramadan and like really do it. And I'm just so proud because I've never seen him apply this amount of discipline to himself before. 
He's a good man. He's not afraid to fix things. He knows how to cook. He goes grocery shopping. I'm looking around like a lot of y'all 16-year-old sons are not 16 going grocery shopping and can fix a tire. He's doing great. B.L. Shirell has put out a powerful message about mass incarceration through her music. She shares the experiences that shaped her into the person she is today and how her and her entire family have been impacted by the generational curse of mass incarceration and all broke the cycle and are now flourishing. In Dante's Inferno, when Dante first set eyes on the devil, similar to when BL and her son set eyes on that judge, Dante says, I did not die and I was not alive. Think to yourself, if you have any wit, what I have become, de become deprived of life and death. BL and her family have all met the devil, sometimes self-inflicted. BL, Wait, an astute this artist, is a, whole a poet, in the basement, executive dog. producer a of Die Jam Pro Records, basement. We'll be forming a generational fleas. curse for us today. All these fucking fleas, dog. It's like when you came in the basement, it was like a door like this, but you come in and like learn the wrong way. It's like next door in the basement. I, I ain't never go that far. Like, I ain't give a fuck. Had the strength and resolve. Dirty 38s that revolved. I was armed at an early age. Say my grace even if I starve. Cause do grace I evolved just from bagging up on dirty plates. Switching tags up on them jersey plates. They say it's the road to riches or pearly gates Depending on what turn you take Depending if you learn to swerve and break We all carry little certain traits I watch my lady dominate her workplace And still feel a need to permit straight I simulate so I, I shake my dreads And I know of her curly mane Do it for Marjorie and do it for Pearly May They blood pressure equivalent to this murder rate With sugar levels that's sending them to attorney rates I gotta update the price on my life insurance rates Black matriarchs never late for that early grade Getting calls before the morning break Unsure if they got them on my wake It's a cycle that I swore I break See my son's torture traits Praying he abort this fate Thursdays selling rollies just for shorty trait Gotta connect in the kitchen, she give me obey Gotta connect this Dominican, call him Jose I gotta test this going if she say okay They bundle up in the summer like it's a cold day I need y'all to listen to her. What the fuck is that smell? It's a message in this. I know it's a lot of cursing. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I'm really bored with the crack rap. But I can't help it, I get flashbacks. I need my flowers. I did a dime, came home and built a non-profit record label for those still inside, still silent. Just being honest, what my acknowledgement? You want a cookie chick? Yeah, chocolate chip, demolish it, then vomit it. I don't even eat that type of shit, but y'all can eat off my accomplishments. I don't follow the trends. I rock button-ups with corduroy collars and trim, and dread hats with plaid and polka dot on the brim. They say I'm out of style, I just call it unique. They say I'm in denial, I just need a few feet You'll get stoned with a few feet if you come within two feet And stay with the latest, I was packing that new heat This is honor to jump, don't hit the market for two weeks But I cop every color, every size, every time they come out Like the Yeezys that you got on your two feet Things copped, all the butter, every size, mix the pies I run out, get the order, knock it out like loose teeth I send my guys letters, still writing on loose leaf They gave my guys letters, not a sentence to proofread but anytime you need the truth, I bleed. And anytime you need the truth, just read. Yeah, and 100. That's right, why you see so fucking high. I'm keeping it the big. I got big back. I need to think like, this spicy be hot. If I got some shit, like, you know? Like, just that, the, that smell became normal. Like, come on, get the fuck out of here, man. Thank you.
Miss Naomi was sentenced to life without parole on July 5th, 1982. She served time at CSI Muncie in Pennsylvania and was released on that same day 37 years later. 37. Who's 18 or younger here? Come on, raise your hand. I can see some kids. Yeah, great. <laughs> you two, the length of your two lives combined, that's still less than what Miss Naomi spent in prison. During that time, she, shared, she says she befriended some of the sweetest people she ever encountered. They would call me auntie, they would call me mama, everybody was my baby. She says about the girl she took under her wing. Music and God are two companions that have accompanied Miss Naomi throughout her life ever since she was a kid. And she in turn spread that love and passion to other people. In Dante's story, when he and Virgil reach the shores of purgatory, they meet souls who hope that heaven will welcome them. They first meet the guardian of purgatory who asks them, who are you? Who, against the hidden river, were able to escape the eternal prison? Who was your guide? What served you both as lantern when from the deep night that will always keep the hellish valley dark, you were set free? Like Dante, Miss Naomi was on a journey, but she was also a guide, a lantern, providing light for the other woman in the darkness of prison. Miss Naomi is now a commutation specialist and helps lifers to go home. She also goes by the artist's name, Simply Naomi, uh, when releasing new songs showing how bright and genuine she is. Now let me tell you a story in Miss Naomi's own words, one that she has shared with us. And she to me. So many people that are on the inside, they've been tricked, uh, they're tricked, lied to, and taken advantage of. And that's what a lot of lawyers do. They wanna get that money, and they lie, and they make promises. They tell you you're gonna get a deal, and you go in front of the judge, and the judge sorts you out of the box and gives you a life sentence. Angie Spellman was my roommate. Wonderful, wonderful person. Just, you know, tied up with the wrong people. And you know how the real you comes out, and the real her has come out, but she was tricked. This is what they do in the system. Of every malice gaining the hatred of heaven, injustice is the goal. And every such goal injures someone either with force or with fraud. A lot of the women felt the very same way that I felt, you know, just wanting God to open our eyes because so many of us were just so blinded, you know, being the reason that a lot of us were even there. And then I knew it was things about me that I need to change in my life. And so all of that was just being in the dark. And I knew I needed to make a change in my life somewhere. Even if that were going to be my life, I knew I needed to start thinking different and talking different, walking different. I knew I just needed to change and I just needed God to open my eyes so I could just see, understand, and realize my worth. Miss Naomi, who was a source of light in the darkness of prison, will now sing for us this little light of mine. <laughs> You're welcome to sing this with me. I'm sure you know this. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. How about all over this 
has ever had a bad day when all you wanted to do was just listen to music to get your mind off everything? Raise your hand if it sounds like you. Nice. Almost everyone. <laughs> well, you guys aren't the only one who do this. Fiel Sherelle does this too. And according to a study done with prisoners and music rehabilitation programs, one of the most effective ways to prevent someone from going to jail again once they've been released is through music therapy. Music heals. P.L. Sherell told me what music means to her. She said, even though this music has a whole lot of trauma in it, it's still coming from a very healing place. It's like I'm looking back at those times. It's not like I'm speaking like I'm in it at the moment. In Dante's journey, when he leaves hell and reaches the base of Purgatory Mountain, he says, to course across more kindly waters, my talent's little vessel lifts her sails, leaving behind herself a sea so cruel. B.L. Shirell's little vessel that lifts her sails is her music. She says, my relationship with music has changed. Now, I don't have to lean on it so much anymore for the outlet. That's not my way of healing now. It's more so through helping people. I'm in the service profession. Now, Biel will sing Till I Go, a song about reconciliation, mainly how she healed her relationship with God. This song, maybe people can relate. It's about a spiritual transition, searching for a place. I was in that place not too long ago. And I just want to say, you know, just keep your heart whole, keep your heart good. And that's all that matters. Ever get sad from being happy like? I did this shit for Gramps and she in the afterlife. And the sacrifice that she made, it took half a life. Y'all say she looking down, she hardly had a sight. I feel my faith has lost its appetite Cause I done served the deacon and the pastor's wife I used to know them verses front to back and back to right Until I read that bible printed in this black and white And it's cracker type My spirit don't have a sanctuary It roams cause what is home But God knows it's gold It shows straight through my soul And he chose me Now get a load of me Fat dyke with a beard so you notice me Got a limp from some bullets caught below my knees Triple D's, who the fuck you know as bold as me? And I'm supposed to be exactly how she molded me Yeah Only way will I know Won't know till I go And if you go before I go I promise try to let you know Like I'm spiritually homeless where my spirit be wrong Where my spirit be gone Where my spirit be gone Forgive me I'm high Some memories die Some shit stuck with me like a minute Ain't even went by and ain't no changing the cycle They slayed the disciples in pages of the Bible I used to pray to a Christ who wasn't doing nothing Cause the only time I prayed was when I wanted something I got caught dumping, now I got caught coming But Lord, please forgive me for all my shortcomings Give me credit for being forthcoming Not saying it's no paradise But no one knows what that shit is like Praising Christ or Allah, Jehovah, whoever I like Don't make me right So if I praise my God until I go numb and die Then I find out it was the wrong one Am I condemned cause I was speaking with the wrong tongue? I'm just translating the lyrics to the song sung Only way will I know I won't know till I go And if I go before you go I promise try to let you know Like I'm spiritually homeless Swear my spirit be wrong where my spirit be gone? Where my spirit be gone? And now I lay me down. I pray to love my soul. If I should die before, I pray to love my soul. I wanna feel your energy. 
Now I lay me down I pray the Lord my soul If I should die before I pray the Lord my soul Now I lay me down Pray the Lord my soul If I should die before I pray the Lord my soul Now I lay me down Pray the Lord my soul If I should die before I promise try to let you know Amen The American Journal of Public Health found that for every year a person spends in prison, their life expectancy is reduced by two. Miss Naomi Wilson thought she would die in prison. She wrote her obituary 15 times so that her son would know she was more than the criminal the state painted her to be. I will be sharing Miss Naomi's powerful words as a glimpse into chronic, often intentional, medical negligence in prisons, as well as Miss Naomi's resistance to the prison's attempt to rob her of a death with dignity. Miss Naomi insisted, this place is not going to eat me up. Her friend, Biel Shirell, said that it's a fight to stay alive, especially as a lifer. Miss Naomi's kindness and compassion to others, as well as her beautiful music, were part of her fight to stay alive by refusing to submit to prison authorities. I will be sharing a story Miss Naomi told me in her own words, and she to me. I'll tell you when I thought they had me. They told me I was a diabetic, and that really shocked me. Nobody ever told me I had diabetes. First, when I had blood and stuff done, they didn't tell me I was a diabetic. Then, I started feeling really funny, and I went down to medical. The nurse said, well, why haven't you been taking your diabetes medication? And I said, diabetes? I don't have diabetes. Nobody ever told me I was a diabetic. So then they told me, to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and start taking insulin. And one day, I was in the unit, and I start feeling really lightheaded and stuff. So I went to my cell, and I lay down on my bed. And anyway, the officers came in, and next thing, I'm in the, in my, I'm in the ambulance. They took me to the hospital, and I was in the hospital for five days. Because they were giving me insulin, and my body rejects insulin. When I did come around that next day, and the doctor came in, she said, who's been giving you insulin? And I said, well, who do you think's been giving me insulin? The prison. She said, you had so much insulin in your blood, you were about to go into a diabetic coma. When I came back, I was just so grateful. Now this was some me and God time. It was a pleasure to just go to that church and just play music and just thank God. I was just so grateful because these people almost killed me. And so I want to, you know, file a lawsuit. And sure enough, they said I couldn't file a lawsuit because see, this is how crooked they are. They said I couldn't file a lawsuit because the prison saved my life. Isn't that something? At the end of purgatory, as they enter the Garden of Eden, Virgil said to Dante, I crown you over yourself. Like Dante, Miss Naomi 
went through hell, refusing to be eaten up. Miss Naomi, being her own Virgil, crowned herself through her ability and determination to control her own life. Miss Naomi will now be performing I Will Wear a Crown. <laughs> Thank you. When you sing that song, it makes me remember another quote from Dante. Cantando si dolce che mai da me si parte il diletto. Singing so sweetly that it will stay, the sweetness of it stays with me forever. Uh, every time you sing, I think of that quote. And uh, now we're going to go into the part of the presentation where we talk about Attica. And I'm going to ask Carlos... Roche, who was at Attica, survived the Attica massacre, to introduce this, uh, this section, and he'll be uh, able to speak with you afterwards if you have questions uh, when this part of the presentation is finished. Also, I, um, I want to introduce Dario Pena, 
who um, was not at Attica, but he worked with Naomi and BL over the summer creating this uh, presentation about Attica that you're gonna see some fragments of. And I've, I've had the honor of working with Dario for many, many years, saw him play the lead role in Macbeth. He's, uh, and it's, we're really glad that he can, can be with us here. But now I'll just ask Carlos to, uh, you know, uh, just say a few words to, to introduce this. You can stay right here. Here's the, here's the mic. Hello. Audience is out there. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Mass. Yeah. It was 51 years ago, and uh, it was like yesterday. Wow. It's scary because Attica can happen again. You know, anytime you think about it, they can do it all over again. Yeah. It's a heck of a thing. We need to really, really concentrate on what we're doing now to avoid what's, what can happen at any time. Attica is really a place that would make you want to cry every day. You know, Attica is all of us, mm. and all of us are Attica. I hope and pray, man, that it won't happen again, but it can. All we gotta do is slip just a little bit and they can bring it back, man. They can resurrect it like it's <laughs> like it happened yesterday. You know. Be glad that we can get around this. We have to. You know, we don't never want that to happen again to anybody. But it can happen again. Thank you. With the exception of Indian massacres in the beginning of, during the 19th century, the state police assault which ended the four-day prison uprising was the bloodiest one-day encounter between Americans since the Civil War. The official New York State Commission report on Attica. To FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, urgent extremist matters at approximately 9 a.m. on September 9th, 1971, over 1,200 inmates of the Attica Correctional Facility took command of the facility and captured 38 hostages, guards, and civilian employees. I wrote the song in honor of the 43 men who perished in the Attica uprising. It's called Attica Demands. Bring them horns in. Uh, uh, we going all in Trying to make it to the morning Trying to make it to the morning Yeah, yeah, uh, let's go Meet us in the yard We got the guards, including the Sarge Only armed with our hearts, but we need to talk We got the mans Die like a man, last resort of our plan Gotta meet us in the yard We got the guards, including the Sarge Only armed with our hearts, but we need to talk We got the mans Die like a man, last resort of our plan. 
First thing we need is amnesty for this calamity. Can you guarantee that we make it home to our families? And humanity is the lens in which you branded me. Expecting different results, insanity, crazy. We demand adequate medical, I've seen several. Residents die due to negligence, it's unethical. We demanding in the slave labor, we professionals. Working electrical, but not a dime of the revenue. We demanding in the political persecution. The 13th time they amended the constitution, strictly for institutions, keep our necks in these nooses, yeah. Slow death in its execution, huh? Allow us to form a union if productive citizens is the goal, you gotta prove it then. We got demands, gotta take a stand. Shame on this country once again for forcing our hand, but meet us in the yard. We got the guards, including the Sarge, only all with our hearts, but we need to talk. We got demands, die like a man, last resort of our plan, gotta meet us in the yard. We got the guards, including the Sarge, only all with our hearts, and we need to talk. We got the man's die like a man, last resort of our plan. We demand legal representation to see parole. And every one of them seats should be filled through a vote. We demand accountability, CEOs want control, bring their problems and the work from their homes and they prone to be bound. They are prone on a hole on the stone where it's system overload, system overthrown. We need more diversity in the hierarchy. Black and brown people in authority that I can see. This is more reality. All white men reigning over the society, normalize the proprieties. Am I developing traits that don't line with oppressors? Am I enveloped in hate society's reflection? Shit, it's like we need to revolt, we need to vote, we need to do both, it's like a boat needing a hole. We done went from trees with the rope to knees to the throat. And then this road taking its toll, they gotta meet us in the yard. We got the guards, including the Sarge, only all with our hearts in. We need to talk, we got the mans. Die like a man, last resort of our plan, gotta meet us in the yard. We got the guards, including the Sarge, only all with our hearts in. We need to talk. We got the mans, die like a man, last resort of the plan. Yeah, yeah. Meet us in the yard, yeah, yeah. Meet us in the yard, yeah, yeah. They got the meet us in the yard. Uh, they got the meet us in the yard, yeah, yeah. Uh, bring them horns in. Yeah, we going all in, yeah. In honor of the 43 men who perished in Attica, we going all in, yeah. flew over and they told people to surrender and put their hands on their heads and when they said it a second time they started opening up shooting place your hands on top of your head and surrender to an officer I repeat you will not be harmed I repeat you will not be harmed It was a real nightmare when I saw the first helicopter. I had nightmares for years. I still have them. I had one about three weeks ago. I smell gas, I hear smoke. I smell gas, I hear guns going off. It's that post-traumatic stress shit. 50 years ago, and I'll be 80 in seven months. Carlos Roche, Attica survivor. The song is called Choppers. You just gotta listen to this one. I pray them choppers is coming to save us. But I know better, it seemed like them copters is coming to spray us. Rather do that to continue to torture, degrade, and enslave us. I hear them shots and I fall to my knees as I recite a prayer. They ain't coming to save Imagine a football placed under your chin. They say if you drop it, they going up a shoddy. Put some high hollows deep under your skin. You laying exposed, they beat you for hours and you barely conscious, you numb to your limbs. I ain't just rapping, no I ain't capping. This shit really happened, that's word the big blacking. They strip you naked, they burn up your flesh with not menthol and precious. Play Russian rule at your head. And they made you watch every second. Beat on your testicles, various weapons. Shells was in by, hit your friend where his head is. I pray them choppers is coming to save us. 
But I know better, it seems like them copters is coming to spray us. Rather do that to continue to torture, degrade, and enslave us. I hear them shots and I fall to my knees as I recite a prayer. They ain't coming to save You was just helpless. Torture for days made you crawl through a gauntlet. Pissing out blood for two years, gotta chalk it. They broke your feet and then told you to walk. And of course, when you couldn't, they beat you regardless. Even though they were the causes. Getting new charges. Charged us for us getting slaughtered and tortured. I wish I could tell y'all this story less harsh. But truth is more stranger than fiction. The roots of the dangers, the system. They shoot and they blaming the victim. Proof that the new Negro slave in the prison. Shit, ain't no grace of redemption. I pray them choppers is coming to save us. But I know better, it seems like them copters is coming to spray us. Rather do that than continue to torture, degrade, and enslave us. And I hear them shots and I fall to my knees as I recite a prayer. They ain't coming to save us. You have at least 88 people shot so severely that they need immediate surgery. There is absolutely no preparation made to treat the inmates. No blood, no plasma, no bandages, no painkiller, no fluids, no surgical, nothing, nothing, nothing. LD Barkley was shot. The shot collapsed his lung. He couldn't get medical treatment. And he bled to death. Liz Fink, Attica Lawyer. It's my last one for the night. It's been awesome. You guys have been a great crowd. I promise you this, scariest shit that ever exists is being in prison while physically sick. And if you got life to them, you already dead, so hopefully it'll be quick. I see my Sally start taking the meds. Shit fuck me up when she seen to forget. In a year's time, she was slobbering, spitting, playing this shit. I promise you still, scariest shit that I seen on the hill. Being in prison and mentally ill, where they kill your will. Day after day, through pill after pill. You go bananas and slip on a pill. Stuck in a slam and can't win a pill. Can't even feel, so you really can't heal. That's worth the camp hill. Ill. The infirmary, smelling like blood in the murder scene. Mixed with neglect, no sense of respect. We dying from no sense of urgency. We die from deliberate indifference and standard procedures and routine surgeries. We dying from constantly being denied our services purposely. Until we are ill in this terminally. Boy, this shit really murder in first degree. Screaming in vain, they don't believe in our pain. It's like we ain't bleeding the same. Serving our time, equate the deserving to die. Freedom we see at the grave, wish we was free at the gate. Only way they can escape and see what remains is families receiving remain. I promise you this, scariest shit that ever exists. Being in prison while physically sick And if you got life to them, you already did Hopefully it'll be quick I see my Sully start taking the meds Shit fuck me up when she seen to forget In a year's time she was slobbering, spitting, playing and shit I promise you still Scariest shit that I seen on the hill Being in prison and mentally ill Where they kill your will Day after day through pill after pill You go bananas and slipped on a pill Stuck in a slam and can't win a pill Can't even feel so you really can't heal That's worth the can't heal Yeah people who lie escape responsibility for their actions against humanity. The Attica atrocities should be investigated not only by you, ladies and gentlemen, but by the United Nations and the World Court of Justice, because what happened at Attica was a crime against humanity. Prisoners of New York State are extensions of the social ills that the black and Puerto Rican people are subjected to in the ghettos. We are not animals. We are human beings. The people are the power, everybody working together, struggling to see justice. All power to the people, libertad. Jose Paris, human rights advocate.
intend to be beaten and driven as such. The entire prison populace, that means every one of us here, has set forth that we will not tolerate the brutalization and the disregard of the lives of the prisoners here and throughout the United States. What has happened here today is but the sound before the fury of those who are oppressed everywhere. D.L. Barkley. Murder. Attica is something good to know about because it's the reality of what can happen again. Today, tomorrow, the day after, next week, next month, 10 years from now, it can happen again and it will because they got away with it before. And if they can get away with what they did to us, and we just a grain of sand in history, can you imagine what they feel they can get away with? Don't go to sleep on them. If you do, they're gonna gobble you up. They're gonna disappear you. Don't believe nothing they say. Believe that they can and will do anything to anybody because they believe they have a right to do it.
September 13th, 2021, was the 50th anniversary of Attica. 50 years later, and it's still going on. That's the system. If it happens again, and you don't know about it, then that's on the system. But if it happens again, and you know about it, then that's on you. Attica is every prison, and every prison is Attica. Attica means fight back. <laughs> much for being with us. Uh, if you'd like to, to stay, you can ask uh, questions or give some comments to, the, uh, to, uh, to Carlos, the performers. Uh, I neglected to give thanks to our technical crew and video and sound, Ciara and Jason and Mark. Um, so I'll, if anybody has a question or a comment, let me know. I'll give you the microphone. Yes? I totally appreciate what you guys are doing here today. We, me, I'm a mother, I am a wife, I am a sister. When my family get locked up, we get locked down. It's about the family. One individual can affect a hundred because it takes more than that one individual that is there. So we have to stand up for our family. I am an individual who had a family member that was burnt in Africa at the time that they had the situation going on. And I am very proud to say that I'm glad that we continue to remember because his story is our story which makes history. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's... Oh, go ahead. Hello. My name is Lynn Rudolph. All my friends call me Ibrahim. And I came to see my man Carlos. I haven't seen him since 1985. But I just want to say to the family, and incidentally, I did 29 years straight in prison. Straight. I did 29 years, so that's nothing to be proud of. But I just want to say to the family, you see those walls around prisons? They're not only designed to keep us out, 
It also designed to keep you from coming in. So you guys keep going in. I don't care what procedure, what SOP you have to go through, go through it and go see your family. Good evening, everyone. I just want to thank Exodus Production for bringing this wonderful concert. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, you were, you were. God bless you all. I just want to say thank you. My heart was deeply moved by the whole production team up there. You were just your, the words that you chose the way that you produced all of the information to share with us, all of the performances. Ma'am, I must say that just listening to you both young, it, it just inspired me to know that when we're going through difficult challenges in life, it's really hard at times when we have to face adversities, but just to see you both up there sharing your stories, let us know that when we are in our personal prisons, which it may not be behind a jail wall, but some of us in our life struggles, it feels like we're in prison to it. We're locked in, right? But to see you up there, it gives me hope to know that if I keep striving and I keep pressing and I just believe that the community can be saved, and if I just keep sharing the love that I have in my heart, I know I'm only one person. God knows, but if I just continue to share that love that I have in my heart, it does make a difference, right? Because I'd rather be in my grave than to be a slave to anything or anybody. Okay. Uh, professor, can I make one small request to the crowd? Guys, I have a fairly small nonprofit called Die Jim Crow Records. If you guys could please go to diejimcrow.com and sign up for our email list. I would be extremely grateful. So, um, diejimcrow.com, please sign up. Thank you. Okay, Carlos, is there anything you'd like to say after hearing those songs and stories about Attica? Some of them were your words. Hey, it was very inspirational, you know? Uh, all of this makes me reflect back to that day in the, in the yard, you know, uh, it was scary, you know, people got killed, and I think about it, you know, it's scary, it's still scary, 51 years later, you know. It was a trip, you know, it was a trip. It was a trip that I hope that nobody have to go through. You know, they broke both my hands. I got ruptured discs in my neck. And, you know, it, it was crazy. You know, I still wake up in the middle of the night, man, smelling gas and Hearing guns go off, you know, 51 years later, I still had the nightmares, you know. They mean I never go away, <laughs> but I ain't going nowhere, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Okay, we... Um, hi, Carlos, and I'm glad that you survived. My brother was in the Attica um, riot, and I'm glad he made it home, just like I'm glad you made it home. And you're a blessing to a lot, a lot of people, even me, and I was formerly incarcerated, too, for 18 years. But I'm glad to see you home and thank God for you. Okay, we, we, have, uh, we have some more uh, entertainment for you, uh, but first I wanted to give the, the students a chance to say 
uh, anything you'd like to say about what it was like to work with Naomi and BL and speak their words? Great, thank you. Um, so one thing in advance, the last words that I shared during the song that Naomi played were Carlos's. I just wanted to, to emphasize that. And so now about working with these two beautiful people. Um, 10 out of 10 experience, great. <laughs> Strongly recommend if you ever get the chance to, um, to yeah, spend maybe, maybe invite them for dinner or something. Philadelphia, I heard, right? Is it, is it like ish? Yeah. So yeah, it was beautiful. It was very, very fulfilling, brought great joy and knowledge and got me even more interested in, yeah, everything that is going on in this country. And I hope that with my academic career and what comes from it, I can make a bit of a difference. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh. Working with these two women and some of the other people we worked with this semester, I was just moved. Like, my life fully changed from before and after working with these people. The, the thing I really took from this is just how powerful these stories are. For so long, like, all of us have turned a blind eye to this, because we just don't question the system. Especially when the system works for you, you don't question it. And it's, it's just not okay. That they have proved to me that that is just wrong and their stories are powerful, and listening is powerful. But they can't share their stories with everyone. So it's your job to continue passing them on and not stop talking about what's actually going on in those prisons. Okay, that's it. No, no, thank you guys. I think I said a lot. Y'all about sick of me by now. <laughs> well, um, um, I'd grateful. just like, like to say that I am just so blessed to be here today. I'm telling you, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful that so many of you turned out, you know, tonight because um, what we're talking about, th these are things that need be known. Um, and to know that when you hear that the struggle continues, the struggle still continues on the inside. Um, and a lot of times when you don't have a loved one in prison and you just don't really know what's going on, you think that, well, they're okay and they're safe at least. But, you know, you think that they get three hots a cot, you know, get, you know and they're fine, but it, it just ain't like that. I did 37 years in prison. And I'm telling you, just by the grace of God, do I stand here today. And I've been home now two and a half years. Well, really going on three years. But, you know, I was commuted in, in 2019. And it is no way that I can ever forget where I came from. So, I, you know, I have to give back. So I try and just persuade people. I don't care who it is. When I talk to anybody, it could be a stranger. Don't let anybody come and ask me for a couple of dollars because if they do, now they got to hear a story before they get that $2. You know, <laughs> because, you know, because I got to spread the word to let people know what is going on. And um, I don't be, there's no shame in, in, in my game. You know what I mean? I am who I am. I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. But praise God, I'm delivered from that now. And so when I see people that are in the struggle, I can understand because I know it ain't easy. You know, and so this is why, you know, the love that I have in my heart, and I thank God that I am just built the way that I'm built because I just love everybody. I just love people. I don't care what you do, where you came from, what you're doing. I just love you, and if there's any kind of way that I can give, you know, my help, then, then that's what I'm going to do. So I just want to say again that I'm grateful 
that, that you're here tonight. I hope that, you know, you got something out of what you heard tonight and remember some of these things and take it with you. You know, and for some of those that don't have loved ones on the inside, get involved in prison society or something like that so you can get a chance to go inside and meet some of the people on the inside to know that they're people too. And you have to understand that we're not exempt from making mistakes. People make mistakes in life. You know, we're, we're, and, and, and it doesn't have to be that you made a mistake. You can jump in your friend's car and your friend can be loaded and, and, and you get pulled over. You going to jail too. You know, so you just never know. So don't ever say me. So when you point that, you know, it can't be me because when you point that finger, turn it around and point it at yourself. You know, you just never know. So just be mindful and just, you know, reach out sometimes. Just try to help people if you can in any kind of way. And, and thank you so much for being here. Professor's getting up. I guess he's telling me to shut up. So I'm, I'm using my peripheral vision. <laughs> okay, so thank you all again for being here. Thank you, Naomi. No, I, I just want, I look, could listen to you all night. I just want to give the kids a chance to I know present that you their do. work. Uh, I so know. I'm going to introduce Rock Jefferson, who's been, uh, who's part of Exodus team, has been working with uh, kids in the neighborhood, putting together some amazing material, and uh, he's going to talk about it. Make me cry. Stop. My mother here don't make me cry. Damn, hi, mama. I didn't expect that, man. Um, yo, I personally invited so many people in this room, and I really, really thank y'all and appreciate y'all coming out on a Tuesday, man. For real. Um, we do so much great work. We don't have you no know, disrespect to us. We don't have like the biggest like following right now, like social media and stuff, because we know in this world that's what count. How many followers you got? But I don't care if it's 100 people following us, it's 100 great people. You understand what I'm saying? So we getting the word out, but we do a lot. You know what I mean? But I'm glad y'all got to see some of it. Um, we're going to do a couple songs and close out, actually, this production style. The first record is called Rich Roots. This is a, a very dear record to me. Um, and me and my brother Cash, come share the stage with me, my boy. Yeah, so this record right here, man, I'm basically talking to the youth, and I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to put some sense in their head, man, without them feeling slighted, but it's the truth, you know? So, let's do it. Woof! Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because you can't hate the roots of a tree, and not this hate the tree. Really you can't hate your origin, but that go be you end up hating yourself. Mm -hmm. Taylor about the fucking flex. Uh, rich roots on destined. Uh, low boost, but we stepping. Uh, black power, what I'm rapping. Did they tell you that knowledge was a weapon? Uh, rich roots on destined. Uh, low boost, but we stepping. Uh, black power, what I'm rapping. Did they tell you that knowledge was a weapon? Uh, roots revisited. Did they tell you that knowledge was a weapon? Roots that penetrate deep. Within the fertile earth they say that? defines our work. Uh, they say black lives matter. To list a badge on a platter. Uh, uh -huh. Not guilty automatic. Another black mom shattered. Uh, dear Lord, I pray for the weak. And the ones that gotta pray that they eat. Uh, need a whole eight for the sleep. Keep it grass cut, homie. Know how they creep. Uh, back pedals, reparations. But you blew it. Just saying. Cut went on the store, <laughs> but you went and bought the ore. Uh, rich roots on pure, uh, brother keep him as law. Uh, jealousy with a flaw. If we came together, we could have it all. Uh, how could a king be a fiend? Why you calling her thigh? She a queen. Uh, Mom said he had a dream, but this couldn't be the scheme. Uh, they kill a brother and we riot. But when your brother do it, we quiet Program or we jail, they got talent My brother need a vacate, not right this island uh, Exodus 17 said God work So if you believe it, put God first uh, To turn up the cheek, at time hurt 
But they change the mindset, change the mind first, mm. Cause hurt people, hurt people Ain't drinking poison, if I was, could be lethal uh, My arms out, I'm trying to reach you Put the phone down, bro, I'm trying to teach you It take more to say I don't than I need you You hurting, little brother, I can read you There's no soldier left behind, I won't leave you But you gotta elevate from this evil uh, Rich truth, so I'm destined uh, Little boots, but we stepping uh, Black power when I'm rapping, uh -huh. and I get the more that knowledge was a weapon. Uh, rich boots, so I'm destined. Uh, low boots, but we stepping. Uh, Black up, power when I'm rapping. Uh -huh. Did they tell you that knowledge was a weapon? Uh. Y'all in that acting, I'm in that action. The Louis White, automatic, Asiatic. I ain't lacking, but I'm smoother than satin. Stacking these baggies, laughing, blowing smoke in the face of the police captain. I wanna see me go back in. But if everything we doing legit, how can we snatch him? He ain't out here trapping, moving them bricks to see in the fashion. So however you growing this shit, let's make it happen. He show resistance and clap There's power in the bag, so if they ask you what happened, say you thought that he was reaching for something, the threat was massive. Felony on your record, cause it's gonna protect them and feed the media stories to point out your Perfections, even if you show reform, you still in debt to the law. But the only one with power to judge us was the law. A guilty verdict for murder and George Floyd and vindication for acquittals they been giving them boys. Uh, rich boots, so I'm destined. Uh, low boots, but we stepping. Uh, black power, what I'm repping. Did they tell you that knowledge was a weapon? Uh, rich boots, so I'm destined. Uh, rich boots, but we stepping. Uh, black power, what we repping. Did they tell you that knowledge was a weapon? Ah. The human soul holds an excellent mold, and every weed need shall bend. Recognize your designer as an adult or a minor, for human excellence dwells within every seed. Thank y'all so much, that's my baby. But only those right, so are pure. This next record, Young, Black, and Reckless. Yo, Flo, come to the stage, Flo. Brother Flo, oh, come on, man. stage is yours. Yeah. We good? Yeah. It's for the trenches. Yeah. Yo, what's up, Exodus? Make some noise. What's good? For the people say I auto tune too much. Yeah. Huh? So special. Listen. Ah. We can give you hell or we can give you heaven. My youngins is misguided, they just need direction. Dripping on the steel, they feel unprotected. I feel disconnected, young, black, and reckless. We can give you hell or we can give you heaven. My youngin' is misguided, they just need direction. Wow. Dripping on the steel, they feel unprotected. Wow. Yeah. I feel disconnected, young, if the black, and reckless. In the deal is raised, me. What you Think about what the trenches made me Whoa. Sorry mama what but you, you couldn't say save me what? Take a shot cause I've been triggered lately yeah. Escape reality I couldn't face it Whoa. My reality is too abrasive uh -huh. I'm trying to ball they wanna stop me from scoring Duck and murder but they trying to kill me soft like Lauren Whoa. Save for a rainy day I can't stop it from pouring Not too hopeful for me local so I die for that four and it's real yeah. Sleepless nights I hear more gunshots than crickets How I came up pops was missing cops and stop us and frick us Ops popping the pistols my gang locked in the system Cause we chose not to listen we made moves not Decision is broke. We ain't got a choice in the matter. Who gon' speak for us? We ain't got a voice where it matter. We ain't busy trying to vibe, trying to avoid these disasters. Dropped out of school early. I can't wait for a bachelor's. It's real. Uh. We can give you hell or we can give you heaven. My youngest is misguided. They just need direction. Dripping on the steel, they from unprotected. I feel disconnected, young, black, and reckless. We can give you hell or we can give you heaven. My youngest is misguided. They just need direction. Dripping on the steel, they from I feel disconnected, young, black, and reckless Since a young and I was labeled just black and reckless yeah. Check the records with soul and weapons to snatch a necklace Whoa. 15 and it was alcohol in the beverage Whoa. Credit notes that mommy wrote cause we ain't had a debit yeah. Made it out the mud so I'm screaming Betty Whoa. It was 3 zip and they was screaming dead it yeah. We ain't never had no role models Pray for gold bottles, million dollar smiles with some gold bottoms Whoa. I hit my man, knock the soul out him yeah. Next night it was roll bottom uh, the wolves get ancient with a jewelry bright yeah. Right hand caught life and pick that jewelry right Whoa. Drill through the day just to see the night Pray my disciples never cross them, Jesus Christ
frozen. Jesus Christ. My disciples never cross me. Jesus Christ. We could give you hell or we could give you heaven. My youngest is misguided, they just need direction. Dripping on the steel, they from unprotected. I feel disconnected, young, black, and reckless. We could give you hell or we could give you heaven. My youngest is misguided, they just need direction. Dripping on the steel, they from unprotected. I feel disconnected, young, black, and reckless. All right, here we go. So, I have, what's up, baby? Appreciate you coming, bro. I have, well, we have this thing that we do with the youth. It's called, like, changing the narrative, descriptive writing. We know what a lot of these kids are saying. We know the music that they're listening to. It's not cool. It's not what the 10-year-olds should be talking and sounding like. So I need my boys to come to the stage. Amir, Aiden, JJ. Band Brothers, let's go, Band Brothers. Peace, Lord. 